from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Monday, November the 19th, 2018. Well, despite speculations that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government was in jeopardy and that early elections were likely, it seems today that the prime minister is holding on. Chairman of the Jewish Home Party, Naftali Bennett, had threatened to leave Netanyahu's coalition if he was not made defense minister after Avigdor Lieberman resigned from the post last week. But last night, Netanyahu met with his coalition, urging them to stay the course, saying that in the current situation with Gaza, it was irresponsible to try and take down the government. And this morning, Bennett and fellow Jewish Home member, Justice Minister Ayala Chaked, said they would remain in the government, putting off early elections in Israel for the time being. Netanyahu, by the way, will himself be serving as Israel's defense minister, at least for now. Israeli security forces arrested a 25-year-old Palestinian woman who was trying to enter Israel today through the Kalandia checkpoint in the West Bank with a knife concealed in her bag. The knife was hidden in a container of potato chips. She was taken for questioning. And in Gaza today, some 800 Palestinians were rioting along the northern border, throwing rocks and firebombs at IDF soldiers who responded with tear gas and, in some cases, when necessary, live fire. According to the Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry, 25 Palestinians were injured. An IDF spokesperson also said that dozens of ships set sail from Gaza today in an effort to try and breach the naval blockade. Well, the United Nations on Friday passed all of its nine resolutions against Israel, including the resolution calling for Israel to withdraw from the Golan Heights, in which, as we reported to you, the U.S. for the first time voted against the measure instead of abstaining from it, as it has done in the past. But the resolution titled the Occupied Syrian Golan was adopted by a vote of 151 for two against, which was the U.S. and Israel, and 14 abstentions. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu thanked the United States for their support, also vowing that Israel will always remain on the Golan Heights and the Golan Heights will always remain in our hands, he said. And today, Ynet reported that U.S. Ambassador to the U.N., Nikki Haley, is also working on a resolution condemning terror group Hamas for its actions against Israel. And staying with the U.N., the governing board of the World Jewish Congress gathered for a first-of-its-kind meeting today at the headquarters of UNESCO, the U.N.'s educational, scientific, and cultural organization in Paris. The two organizations signed a commitment to the preservation of Holocaust memory and to fighting anti-Semitism. UNESCO Director General Audrey Azulai, who is Jewish, and World Jewish Congress President Ronald Lauder also unveiled an interactive website about Holocaust.org. Azulai said it is essential to provide young people with the skills and tools to engage against the denial and distortion of history, which fuel extremism and anti-Semitism. An official ceremony was held in the Israeli Golan Heights tonight to mark the conclusion of Operation Good Neighbor. The humanitarian mission the IDF has been running for the last five years, treating thousands of Syrian civilians from the country's civil war and providing tons of humanitarian aid, including food, clothing, medical equipment, fuel, vehicles, and other supplies. In September of this year, the IDF announced the large and long-running humanitarian effort has come to an end with the return of the Syrian regime to southern Syria. Well, home renting company Airbnb said today that it will remove its listings in Jewish settlements in the West Bank. According to a statement on their website, Airbnb said we concluded that we should remove listings in Israeli settlements in the West Bank that are at the core of the dispute between Israelis and Palestinians. Israel's tourism minister, Yariv Levin, strongly condemned the decision, calling it a discriminatory one, and said he would pursue punitive measures against the company.
Over 2,000 handmade stars of David were hung across the city of Pittsburgh this weekend. The stars, made by about 1,000 people from around the world, were hung on Saturday in response to the deadly shooting attack at the Tree of Life Synagogue that left 11 people dead last month. Jewish Hearts for Pittsburgh was launched by Hinda Mandel and Ellen Dominus Brood, who created the Facebook page and asked for people to donate handmade stars to help strengthen the Pittsburgh community. And they got them, crocheted, collaged, and painted stars of David with hearts at their center from across the United States and beyond. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Monday, November the 19th, at 7 o'clock, it's the Wisdom of Dr. Ruth. At 7.30, the opening plenary of the Jewish Federations of North America's General Assembly 2018 with remarks from Israel's President, Reuven Rivlin. At 9 tonight, Mark Golub sits down with National Board Member of Stand With Us, Andrew Kliegerman on the Chaim. At 10, authors Daniel Jonah Goldhagen and John K. Roth and Shoah Foundation CEO Michael Berenbaum explore the phenomenon of Holocaust fatigue with Thane Rosenbaum at the 92nd Street Y. And coming up right after this newscast tonight at 6.30, Alan Dershowitz speaks to Israel's ambassador to the UN, Danny Danone, on tonight's One on One. And that's the JBS News update for Monday, November the 19th, 2018. I'm Tisha Bader.